Gormaigat, despite all the, the promises, the rhetoric and the spin of the last few weeks, what we've seen presented today, Minister Antisha, is an epitome of the boom boss politics of the past. The cut to the USC, the changes to the PRSI, will put more than three times more in the pocket of someone earning €70,000 a year compared to the average worker. For those earning €25,000, you're giving them €227 annually. Yet, for individuals earning over €70,000, you put over €900 Euro back into their pockets. And I would ask you, Tisha, how is that fair? By reducing capital tax by 13% for some overnight and reducing tax on wealth, this government has hollowed out the tax base for the long term. And you have truly stolen Fianna Fáil's clothes. This is the kind of giveaway budget that Charlie McCreevy himself would have been proud of. By reducing the USC in an unequal way, by cutting the capital gains tax and raising the threshold for CAT, and reducing corporation tax, you are hauling out the tax base for the long term and reducing the state's coffers. And on a full year effect, it amounts to €882 million Euro of tax that you believe that this state does not need. And you are doing so in a manner that is deeply, deeply dishonest. That is exactly what happens in the boom bust politics. Along comes the boom and then followed by the bust. And you, Tisha, have set your face against meaningful long term investment in Ireland's infrastructure and in our frontline services. And that means that your growth policy is not sustainable and it is not credible. Today you tell us in your budget documents that your ambition for frontline services is they make do with what they have. And you stand over a policy to starve the health, education and childcare budgets of the resources necessary to deliver public services that we can be proud of and that are conducive to growth. Today's budget holds no resemblance to the proclamation of 1916 or to the democratic programme of the First Isle. You have not delivered equal rights and equal opportunities to all Ireland citizens. In fact, you have resolved only to pursue the happiness and the prosperity of the top 14 per cent, Tisha. Because what you've done in this budget, and done very cleverly and slyly, is you've stuffed 100 and 81.9 million euro into the pockets of the top 14 per cent in this state through the USC reduction. And at the same time, you throw a few crumbs from the table to everybody else. How is it fair, Tisha, that 182 million euro of tax cuts are delivered to the top 14 per cent of earners? Have they been out demonstrating on Merrion Street or banging down government doors calling for you to reduce their tax income, that they can't get through, that they can't get to the end of the week unless the government come to their rescue. Why do you do this, Minister, when you know that there are so many other needs in Irish society? This isn't the type of future that the women and men of 1916 envisaged for their country. And in this budget, you're attempting to buy the electorate. You have placed a price tag on every man, woman and child in the state. For the child, it's 120 per week. For the senior citizens, it's three euro. For the average worker, it's just below a fiver. You're hoping that self-interest will be what their focus will be. You're hoping that they will turn their back on the housing crisis, the health crisis, the homelessness crisis, the fact that we have increased poverty. But Minister and Tisha, the Irish electorate will not be bought, and they're not fools either. Today's budget offered this government a real opportunity to finally break from the failed politics of the last 20 years. Instead, what you've done is you've copper fastened it. You've increased the threshold of inheritance tax to €280,000, one of the few mechanisms in the taxation code that captures wealth. So let us be clear about who benefits from this budget. And the Tisha talks about, and the Minister for Finance talks about the squeeze middle. And we see in the budget who the squeeze middle is, in their view. It is those that earn up to €70,000. Well, let me put a couple of facts on the floor of this House. 
The middle income earners in this state, where 50% of income earners are, or below that figure, is 28,500. 50% of workers in Ireland earn below €28,500 and 50% earn above it. That is where the middle income is, not the 70000 that you would like to pretend that is the squeeze middle. So you're te you tell us that your budget seeks to alleviate the taxation pressures on salaries around 70000 and what you're in fact telling the people is the budget is targeted towards the top 14% of earners. And this is deeply unequal, and we see this in a, a, the Irish taxation system. As I said, €182 million Euro of tax reductions are going to the top 14% of earners in this state. And we see what this government has done over the last four budgets, where you've moved taxes on income uh, away, away from income and on to flat rate, indirect, regressive taxes. So what we have today, Tisha, is that the bottom 10% of earners spend 30% of their income on direct and indirect taxes, while the top 10% spend 29% of their income in direct and indirect taxes. And it's going to get worse as a result of this budget because you've made that uh, situation worse or you've reduced the tax burden for the top 10%. And it is because of this deep inequality that Sinn Féin is committing, committed to abolishing the most regressive taxes, the flat rate taxes, the taxes such as the family home taxes and abolishing water charges. The Kinnow End and the Rethi Poya is Ishla Ugin and Sean Yerins and Down Farbara, but a Tesaga the Hisha, August the Tark Fosti Arthur, August Nyo Slanche Pos, La Fekal Kafarlia and Arpod and Stetch, August La Shinna Gisht, and Rodas Vera Hokalatsi and Nakwiga sent a Horton the Dini, Elishan Poya is Ishla Sestetch. The best you could rustle up for the low paid is a meagre increase of 50 cent in the national minimum wage, and you remain mute on the need for a living wage. In real terms, we know that there's been no increase in the minimum wage since 2007, and you didn't follow Sinn Féin's call to increase the minimum wage by one euro, which would bring the full-time minimum wage to €19,572 euro a year. And we also call on you to increase employee and employer PRSI bans in line with this increase. We support the introduction of the living wage and in our alternative budget call for you to do the same. And as the largest employer in the state, the government and department should lead the way. We have provided for the introduction of the living wage across the civil service and want to see this extended right across the public sector as well as commercial and non-commercial semi-state bodies. And it is a nonsense for this government or anybody in the government benches to claim that this is a budget for families and for small businesses. Let's be clear, this is a budget for the elites, for multinationals and for the high earners. It is anti-sustainable growth, it is anti-investment and it is anti-public services. It is also fiscally reckless, Tisha. Ireland has one of the lowest tax to GDP ratios in Europe, but not satisfied that our ratio at this point in time is 33%. You want to continue to decrease that over the next seven years till it reach a level of just above 30. And that is why we have low investment in public services and high cost of living. You, like Fianna Fáil, have increased the out-of-pocket expenses for families and in many incidents have placed basic services and fundamental needs out of the reach of whole sections of the population. And what more basic need is there than a home? Last week, a little girl was interviewed for a radio segment on family homelessness. And describing her experience of living in a B&B, &B, she said, I don't like it here. I'm not looking forward to Christmas. I don't know how Santi is going to get in. And I don't know where we're going to go. The interviewer then asked her what it was like in her head when she wakes up in a B&B &B in the morning. And the little girl replied, well, sad and worried, and I feel like bad, because when you're just going down for breakfast, you're just sitting with your dad, eating your breakfast with no friends or anything. Tisha, this little girl isn't alone. There are 1,500 homeless children and their families who are living this experience every day. They live this experience as we're speaking here, go through it tonight, 
and again tomorrow and the next day and on and on and on. One in eight children are now going hungry or without warm clothes or are homeless or living in substandard housing. So after waltzing in here, Minister, and Taoiseach with a full book of measures that hollow out the taxation base and throw a few crumbs in the direction of public services, spare a thought, just spare one wee thought for this little girl and for the tens of thousands of children like her, because she is a direct consequence of your policies. So what are the other outcomes of your policies? Child poverty has risen under your watch. Income inequality has risen under your watch. Family homelessness has risen under your watch. And you even managed to bring the public health system to a new level of catastrophe. There are record numbers today waiting for treatment, with 401,000 on the outpatient waiting list and 69,000 people are waiting for inpatient or day case treatment. We're now used to the fact that over 300 patients every single day are left languishing on trolleys, day in, day out. And it is now the norm for children to wait two years to be assessed by a speech and language therapist. And we know that there are 130,000 families on the, on the housing waiting list. Tisha, inequality is your badge of honour. And inequality is not just about the most vulnerable in society. It has a deeply damaging knock-on effect for low- and middle-income families, as well as the wider economy. And let's take the housing crisis, the crisis that is a grand culmination minister of failed government policies pursued by the gov this government and the last. You abandoned the provision of all housing in to, in the private, to the private market with social housing completions as low now as they were in the 1930s. This astonishing failure has resulted in an upward pressure, not only on supply, but on the cost of homes in Ireland for rental and for purchase. Like so much of government policy, you failed to deliver a strategy that delivers solutions for all families, be they in need of social, affordable or private homes. Change which in the five in the care in the Sakata Slancha, I guess it's Salahar Shervishi Edge has the question of reacting special to no the me homes. Change which is Shoharish, not to mention Jirushka or Akesh Kurumyani. Patisha, you have no ambition, no vision, and no hunger to deliver the type of transformative change that will improve the lives of all our communities. On entering government, you slashed the capital budget by 750 million euro. And despite the fact that there is the fiscal space available this year and next year, and that the economic environment allows for tax increases, you have cut the capital budget next year by 55 million euro. Teacher, there's a housing crisis in this state. You're cutting the capital budget, but you're promised further investment in years to come. We had the glossy launch of the 27 billion euro capital investment plan. But when it comes to putting money on the table, capital investment year on year is down 55 million next year. Shame on you. Shame on you. Sinn Féin have set out a very different vision to the government parties and Fianna Fáil. We want to, if you want to start heckling again, Tisha, it's, be, it's beneath you. But if you want to just do it, I didn't open my mouth and use work. Waxing lyrical there. If you want to do it again, carry on. We want to deliver a fair recovery, one that invests in Ireland's future for the long term and for the benefit of all, not the few. We want to deliver a recovery that ensures that children experience equality and opportunity, be it in their education, in their access to supports and services, and then in their career choices as they pass into adulthood. We want to grow the economy, an economy that is rooted in fair play, where workers earn a decent wage and small businesses can flourish and expand. But this cannot happen, and listen to this, Tisha, this cannot happen by chance, and it cannot happen without a stable and fair tax base. And we can't provide the necessary investments in education, in childcare, in health or infrastructure to secure stability and sustainable growth if we don't have that tax base. What you have told us 
and what you'll tell the public and the media and everybody else who will listen to this government is that you can take 882 million euro of taxes out of the tax base and at the same time you can tackle the hospital waiting list. You can deal with the prohibitive costs of childcare. You can deal with the housing crisis. You can deal with the fact that we have crisis in mental health services. But of course, all of that is rubbish, and you know it. It's the politics of old. It's as dishonest as it is wrong. Sinn Féin's Budget 2016 document sets out an ambitious alternative for what we can achieve in government. Unlike the parties who have held the reins and powers in these institutions, equality is the cornerstone of Sinn Féin's political and policy choices. Societies are more equal. Societies that are more equal do better, Tisha. Their public services are delivered more efficiently. Education is better. People are healthier. Income differentials are lower. Social cohesion is stronger. Taxation is fairer. Enterprise is more innovative. The list goes on and on. And we want to stem the tide of mass immigration of our young people. And a reduction in the USC rate will not in itself bring our young men and women back to these shores. It is the lack of decent jobs, the lack of secure career paths, access to affordable housing and accommodation, and the cost associated with health and childcare that continue to act as a barrier to their return. And who could blame them? Sinn Féin wants to take this challenge head on. We've shown how you can invest, invest 1.7 billion euro in public services next year. It is only by tackling the under, uh, underinvestment in health and tackling childcare costs and delivering affordable housing that we can entice our immigrants back. We welcome the government's decision to provide funding to deliver access to the free preschool year for children with a disability and the additional preschool year. The free preschool year is universal in name only, as children with special needs are prevented from attending as the necessary supports are not provided. And that is why Sinn Féin have again and again called in our budget proposals for 1,000 SNAs for the free preschool year. And we will see whether the allocation that you have afforded this area will be suffice to meet that challenge. 11% of early year services were forced to refuse a child with additional needs last year. Our budget proposal also provided for an additional six weeks maternity benefit that can be taken by either parent as well as a two weeks paternity leave and an increase to the child benefit. And I want to welcome the fact that the government has followed our lead in these measures. Tisha, we must put investment in education centre stage. The Minister for Public Expenditure has the nerve to come in here today and trump up new teaching posts. The reality is he has allocated just 24 million euro in new spending measures in education. Everything else is on pay or demographics. It sounds good, doesn't it, like 167 million euro on education. But then when you read the small print, you find out that 103 is because of demographics. There's more children going to school, so it means no enhanced service. And 43 million is for the pay restoration of teachers across the sector. And there's only 24 million euro left. Yes, and that's the 24 million. But in terms of the resource teachers, in terms of all the other needs in education, they are not being met. Year after year, children and poverty agencies, Minister, have highlighted the increased cost for parents to put their children through the education system that is supposed to be universal. The damage this government has done to the education, education system is far-reaching. Over the course of the, your first three budgets, you cut education funding by nearly half a billion euro. You're putting 24 million back. Cuts to resource, teaching hours, to guidance teachers have been particularly regressive, hitting vulnerable kids the hardest. You've hiked up the costs of third level education to struggling families by 750 euro a year. You've reduced the income thresholds for third level grants. You cut back to school clothing and footwear allowance by a third for primary school children. You introduced fees for apprenticeships and cut funding to third levels. 
BECs and a range of higher education bodies. And it was possible to start to address all of these issues. We showed how it could be done in our alternative budget, where we showed how reversing the cut to guidance teachers would put 700 guidance teachers back into our schools to provide that guidance to our pupils. We would have restored teaching hours, providing 1,183 extra teachers, extra teachers for children with special needs, and reduced the primary class sizes, putting 250 additional teachers into the system, the only measure that you actually did. We would have also increased funding for the school meal programme, the back-to-school uh, back grants for school books, and the back-to-school clothing and footwear allowance. And we would have reduced the third level contribution fee by 500 euro going some way to reduce uh, the, the, the cost on struggling families in terms of third level. In health, we see that you've cut services by over 2.5 billion over the course of your first three budgets. Is it any wonder, Tisha, that there is a deepening crisis right across the health system? We remember what, where you targeted. It was mental health. It was children's services and disability service, increased the drug trash payment scheme uh, 20, by 20 per cent, increased prescription charges for the least well off, and cut frontline posts by up to 10 per cent, and slashed the regional drugs related initiatives by 12 per cent. And you do nothing to address any of that. We have shown how you could have invested an additional 383 million in health, ensuring investment targets areas most of the acute need, above the amount that was needed to deal with the demographic pressures. We showed how you could provide an additional 1,900 frontline posts, including, including consultants, nurses, midwives, speech and language therapists, occupational therapists and physiotherapists. We have shown how you could have provided for an automatic medical card for children with significant medical needs arising from serious illness or disability, and how you could invest in emergency departments maternity care, mental health and disability services, dental care for workers and medical card holders and increase an increased ambulance cover. All of that was possible within the same fiscal space, but what you decided to do is provide an 18 million euro in new health spend when demographics and pay restoration measures under Lansdowne Road Agreement are stripped out of it. Tisha, that is not going to work. Just mark my words, that is not going to work. And the big problem here is that up until now, when we told you it wasn't going to work, you could introduce a supplementary estimate. This year, likely to be in the region of about 600 million euro. But that is not available to us next year because of the rules that you negotiated under the austerity treaty, the expenditure benchmark. So when health begins to overrun again, it is brutal cuts to frontline services. But sure, you know that that will be on the other side of a general election, so you'll hardly care. Not a single new Garda was trained between 2010 and 2013. A paltry 200 new recruits were taken in last year, and the numbers for the last two years didn't even cover the number of retirements in the service over the same period. 600 new Garda in 2016 sounds like a lot, Tisha, but the minister herself acknowledged that about 400 Gardaí retire each year. So it's a net increase of about 200 Gardaí. Again, we have shown you how you could have increased the force by an additional net 1,000 Gardaí, but you refuse to do it. Since entering government, the so-called party of law and order has cut the strength of the Garda Shakana by nearly 10 per cent. It's a shocking record by any standard. And you closed the rural Garda stations at a, cost, at a savings of less than €1 million. Euro. We've shown how you could invest in community policing by training an additional 1,000 Garda to ensure that the strength of the force gets back to where it was before Fine Gael got its hands on the Department of Justice. We 
We also showed you, Tisha, how you could actually embark on an ambitious capital investment of an additional 400 million euro, 300 of which would be directed in housing to deal with this crisis head on. But you've decided to cut overall capital investment by 55 million euro. And you've said within the overall package, you'll allocate 69 million for housing. And that is miserly. It's roughly just under a quarter of what you cut from the housing budget in 2012. Again in 2013, you have funding to local authority housing and another 10% in 2014. Minister, you and your colleagues have the neck to come in here with a tear in your eye after yet another homeless man has died on the streets of our capital city. What exactly is it going to take before you acknowledge the scale and depth of the crisis in emergency and social housing. And you can shake your head for all you want. Because see, the policies that you are announcing today results in homelessness, results in a trolley crisis, results in poverty. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot slush, slash taxes and then pretend that you somehow want to address the homeless crisis. It is some way. It, what is disgraceful is the fact that you have put nearly 200 million euro into the pockets of the 14% wealthiest in the state, but put 69 million into additionally tackling the homeless crisis. That is what's disgusting. When on the doorstep of this chamber, people are dying because they can't have a roof over their head. Thank you, so I will take no lectures from you, from a Labour TD or from anybody else on this issue. Okay, on this issue. Gino what is it going to take for this government to declare a national emergency in relation to housing? What is it going to take for you to finally start to face this issue head on? You have announced today that NAMA is going to build 20,000 houses. I have asked and called year on year to use NAMA's resources to tackle the infrastructure needs of this state, and you have turned your face against it. You would just think that you were elected yesterday or last week. Of course you should be doing that, but true to form, what this government is doing is not dealing with the social clause in the NAMA legislation, but getting NAMA to give money to developers to build private houses and sell them at the biggest cost. That's not what we need when there's 130,000 families on social waiting lists. Listen, we've seen the form of this government. You've promised a lot and delivered little. You've promised to take on the banks in terms of their veto. You've promised to take on the banks in terms of the variable interest rate mortgages that they're charging, the fact that they're screwing nearly 300,000 customers in this state. The minister told us it was budget day when the stick would come out. But there's no mention of giving the central bank the powers to cap interest rates. No mention of increasing the levy, despite the fact that only one bank has moved in any way in terms of standard variable rate. Income inequality has been the hallmark of your government, and it could be addressed, it could be tackled. But we have Labour Ministers for Employment who refuse to take action on low-paid contracts, on the high levels of low-paid and insecure work, who refuse to even acknowledge the scale of bogus self-employment in the construction sector and has limited the low pay commission to focus solely on the minimum wage and not the wider issues around the cost of uh, low pay. I want to conclude in this. It is remarkable that after four and a half years of deep cuts to education, to health, to social protection and increased unfair taxes targeting struggling families, it is in only recent weeks that the Labour Party has finally found its voice. Not one of you, not one of you had the courage of your party's founding principles to stand up to Fine the Gael's Conservative Tory agenda since entering government. Instead, you became their greatest champions, and not for the first time. Well, what a difference a term in government makes. In the closing days of the 2011 election, Labour strategists reduced their entire campaign to a simple, single, simple message. Elect us, and in government we'll soften the sharpest edges of Fine the Gael. Who can forget the Every Little Hurts advertisements? Far from putting manners, Minister, on your coalition partners, you have become more Fine the Gael than Fine the Gael themselves. And that, that was up until your own head was on the block.
But lo and behold, your glorious leader, Labour's very own Countess of Grantham, is throwing her weight around like there's no tomorrow. And it appears, Minister, that your demands most moderate are you only want to save your own heights. This is summed up, it is summed up by the, the Minister for Social Protection, his glee and joy at the suffering of the people of Greece. And the fact that the party that was re-elected into government, Syriza, and the challenges that they face. Can I ask you to send him a message? When his party gets re-elected in the same numbers that Syriza gets, then he can start to give lectures about the left.